In this lecture, I am going to solve this question. The article modeling sediment and water column interactions for hydrophobic pollutants suggests the uniform distribution on this interval as a model for depth of the bioturbation layer in sediment in a certain region. In part A, we have to find the mean and variance of depth. So first of all, let X denote the depth of the bioturbation layer. So X denote the depth of the bioturbation layer in sediment in a certain region. So that means we have to find the expected value of X and the variance of X. Before we could find the expected value of X and the variance of X, we have to find the probability density function of X. We know that X is uniformly distributed over the interval 7.5 comma 20. So that means we can write the PDF of X like this. So we can write f of x is equal to 0 for values of x less than 7.5, 1 divided by 20 minus 7.5 for values of x greater than equal to 7.5 and less than equal to 20 and 0 for values of x greater than 20. So this is the PDF of x. We can write this because we know that if x is a continuous random variable that is uniformly distributed over an interval a comma b then in that case f of x is equal to 1 divided by b minus a for values of x between a and b. So this is a proposition that we have and we have followed this proposition to be able to write this. Okay, so this is the PDF of X. Now let's find the expected value of X. We know that expected value of X is equal to integration of X multiplied by F of X DX over all values of X. So say it is from minus infinity to infinity. In this question, we are given that X can take values between 7.5 and 20. So we can write 7.5 and 20 here. And here we can write X multiplied by 1 divided by 12.5 dx. Integrating this, we get 1 divided by 12.5 and here we have x squared divided by 2 and we have 7.5 here and 20 here. And this is equal to 1 divided by 12.5 multiplied by 20 whole square divided by 2 minus 7.5 whole square divided by 2 and solving this we get 13.75 so expected value of x is equal to 13.75 let's find the variance of x we know that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x whole square we already know this value so we have to find expected value of x square to solve for variance of x. So let's find the expected value of x square. So we know that expected value of x square is equal to integration of x square fx dx from 7.5 to 20 and this is equal to integration of x square multiplied by 1 divided by 12.5 that's our fx dx and we have to integrate this from 7.5 to 20. Integrating this we get 1 divided by 12.5 x cubed divided by 3 and we have 7.5 and 20 here. We can put these values into this expression and solving this we get 202.08. So expected value of x square is equal to 202.08. So now we have expected value of x equal to 13.75 and expected value of x square equal to 202.08. And we know that variance of x is equal to expected value of x square minus expected value of x 
whole square. So now this is equal to 202.08 minus 13.75 whole square and this is equal to 13.0208. So the variance of x is equal to 13.0208. So this is all about part A. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have to find the CDF of depth. So that means we have to find F of X. Well, we know that F of X is equal to integration of F of Y dy from minus infinity to X. And in this case, the minimum value that x is taking is 7.5. So we can write this equal to integration of f of y dy from 7.5 to x. And we know that our probability density function is equal to 1 divided by 12.5. So now we have to solve this. Integrating this, we get 1 divided by 12.5 y and we have 7.5 and x here. This is y. And now we can write this is equal to 1 divided by 12.5 x minus 7.5. So now we can write f of x is equal to 0 for values of x less than 7.5 x minus 7.5 divided by 12.5 for values of x greater than or equal to 7.5 and less than 20 and f of x is equal to 1 for values of x greater than or equal to 20. So this is the cumulative distribution function of x. So this is all about part b. Let's move to part c. In part C, we have to find the probability that observed depth is at most 10. So first of all, this means that we have to find the probability that x is less than or equal to 10. Well, this should not be difficult now as this is equal to f of 10. And we have already found the cumulative distribution function. We know that f of x is equal to x minus 7.5 divided by 12.5. For values of x greater than or equal to 7.5 and less than 20. And we know that x is equal to 10 lies in this region. So we can write f of 10 is equal to 10 minus 7.5 divided by 12.5. This is equal to 2.5 divided by 12.5. And this is equal to 0 0.2. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 10 is 0 0.2. Now we have to find the probability that x is between 10 and 15. So that means we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 15. Well, we know that in case of continuous random variables, this probability is equal to f of 15 minus f of 10. And we know that f of x is equal to x minus 7.5 divided by 12.5 for values of x between 7.5 and 20 and 15 and 10 both are between 7.5 and 20. So that means we can write that this is equal to 15 minus 7.5 divided by 12.5 minus 10 minus 7.5 divided by 12.5. And this is equal to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.2 and this is equal to 0 0.4. So the probability that x lies between 10 and 15 is equal to 0 0.4. Let's move to part D. In part D, we have to find the probability that the observed depth is within one standard deviation of the mean value. So first, let's solve this. So that means we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to mu minus sigma and less than or equal to mu plus sigma where sigma is the standard deviation and mu is the mean. Well, we already know that mu is equal to 13.75. We calculated this in the part A of this question 
and we know that variance of x is equal to 13.02. Well, for this part, we need to calculate the standard deviation of x, that is sigma, which is the under root of variance of x. So it is the under root of 13.02 and this is equal to 3.608. So that means we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 13.75 minus 3.608 and less than or equal to 13.75 plus 3.608. Well, this is equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10.14 and less than or equal to 17.36. Well, we know that we can calculate this probability by subtracting f of 10.14 from f of 17.36. So we can do this f of 17.36 minus f of 10.14 and this is simple to calculate. We know that these two values are between 7.5 and 20. So we can use the cumulative distribution function that we found which was equal to x minus 7.5 divided by 12.5. So we can write here that this is equal to 17.36 minus 7.5 divided by 12.5 minus 10.14 minus 7.5 divided by 12.5 and solving this we get 0.7888 minus 0.2112. And this is equal to 0 0.5776. So the probability that x is within one standard deviation of mean is equal to 0 0.5776. Now let's find the probability that x is within two standard deviation of the mean value. That means we have to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to mu minus 2 sigma and less than or equal to mu plus 2 sigma. Well, we know that sigma is equal to 3.608 and mu is equal to 13.75. So putting these values here, we get 13.75 minus 2 multiplied by 3.608 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 13.75 plus 2 multiplied by 3.608. And this is equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6.53 and less than or equal to 20.97. And this is equal to f of 20.97 minus f of 6.53. We know that f of 20.97 is equal to 1 because f of x was equal to 1 for all the values of x greater than or equal to 20. So this value is 1 minus this value is 0 because f of x was equal to 0 for all values of x less than 7.5. So this is equal to 0. So this means the probability that x is within two standard deviations of the mean value is equal to 1. With this we are done with part d as well and this is all for this question.